please welcome Jeremy Bezer Swift to the stage. Hello, friends. Uh, I'd like to begin my story this evening with a confession. I, Jeremy Matthew Messersmith, am a terrible, terrible person. Just, a, just an all-around garbage human being. Uh, I read the last page of every book first. And I only bother to read that book so I can spoil the upcoming TV show. I love spoilers. I can't help it. As a kid, there was barely a Christmas or birthday that went by without complete foreknowledge of the presents. I would rifle through notebooks and snoop through closets looking for clues and unwrapped gifts. It's a deep character flaw. A symptom of a fragile and brittle mind. But for me, not knowing is pure agony. I can't bear tension, and I hate surprises. So I spoil everything. And I live my life uh, with the wisdom of Oscar Wilde, who said, the only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it. <laughs> now, with fiction, it's often easy to predict what's going to happen, thus resolving the tension. The protagonist wants something, and by the end, they usually get it. Uh, usually through some kind of heroic sacrifice. I like to think I'm pretty good at predicting a film based solely on the trailer. But tension in real life is not so easily or neatly resolved, which brings me to the big knot of our time, climate change. Here's the movie trailer version as best I can understand it. We live in a new age, the Anthropocene, an age where human activity is now the dominant influence on climate and the environment. We have marked this era with fallout from nuclear weapons, soot from power plants, concrete and microplastics, our humble contributions to the geological record. It's an age of mass extinction with 75% of all species on Earth set to die out over the next 200 years. Increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is causing extreme weather and rising sea levels. The degradation of our environment now threatens our very existence. We are in the midst of global ecocide. That, my friends, is some supremely dark shit. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it makes me want to find a nice beach somewhere and bury my head firmly in the sand. It's just, it's too much to process. The problem is too big to comprehend. It's paralyzing. How do you mourn a planet? What song can I possibly sing for all my fellow creatures? forever silenced. Some may find solace in a holy book or a holy bottle. I say great. <laughs> Whatever helps you get through the day is fine by me. But for me, well, being the weak-minded person I am, I need to know how it all ends. Luckily, there is a place that has all of the juicy spoilers I so desperately crave. It's a Wikipedia page titled Timeline of the Far Future. In true spoiler fashion, I start near the end. At an entry labeled 7.59 billion years from now, I find the following comfort. Spoiler alert. The Earth and Moon are very likely destroyed by falling into the sun. Truly a balm for the soul. Three billion years from now, I find this ray of sunshine. There is a roughly one in 100,000 chance that the Earth might be ejected into interstellar space by a stellar encounter before this point, and a one in three million chance that it will then be captured by another star. Were this to happen, life, assuming it survived the interstellar journey, could potentially continue for far longer. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> I'm no expert in statistics, but I believe that a one in three million chance is far better than no chance. <laughs> Two billion years from now, the oceans will evaporate. 800 million years from now, all the plants die. 10 million years from now is the estimated time of a full recovery of biodiversity after the current extinction. 
Now, you, you may be wondering, what kind of psychopath finds comfort in the thought of the earth falling into the sun? Fair enough. I guess it reminds me that while it's pretty much the end of the story, fade to black, roll the credits, um, it's not the end of my story. I have a remarkable superpower right now that I won't have in seven billion years. I'm alive. Most people aren't. <laughs> the overwhelming majority of humans who have ever lived are dead. <laughs> and though we can hear their echoes, they no longer sing to us. It's us, the living, who wield this superpower in the physical world. And if Spider-Man has taught me anything, it's that with great power comes great responsibility. We who can affect change in the physical world have a responsibility to leave that world, leave that world a better place, not only for the unlived billions of humans, but for all living things. And though the outlook is often bleak, I have reasons to hope. For the very first time in human history, we've begun to see the Earth as the fragile, finite, and delicately interconnected orb that it is. For the first time, we can organize on a truly global scale. And for the first time, we have the ability to shape our world with tools our predecessors could never dream of. I have spent and will spend the vast majority of time benched on the galactic sidelines. What a joy to be in the game, alive here now in the thick of it and able to do something about it. Now, I may know what happens on the very last page, but my chapter, the little one I write in every day, is thankfully very blank. And in this very one specific case, I'm generally happier not knowing uh, how it ends. So. Uh, to all the fortune tellers and um, time travelers out there, please, no spoilers.
There's a saying that um, good artists borrow and great artists steal. And uh, I'm happy to confess that I stole this idea straight up from a, a great Minnesotan. I'm going to play a little, this is a little ditty for you. Here we go. We all do better when we all do better. That means everything. The lakes and the rivers, the streams and the creeks, all that lives and breathes. We all do better when we all do better. That means everyone. All genders and colors. Thank you. Uh, this tune is a song about how good the future can be. I think that the first step to a better world is just to be able to imagine a better world. So um, you may not need this song tonight, but someday in the future, you may. And um, I think that it's irritating enough that it will get stuck in your head for when you need it. So. <laughs> Say the future's awesome, everything is a okay. All the work is done by robots, and every day is Saturday. Future people all have jetpacks, fly around in flying cars. There's so much that I could tell you, but the coolest part by far. Everybody gets a kitten. New one every single day. Everybody gets a kitten that you can name if you want, or you can give it away. There is no disease or hunger, there's zero poverty or war. Life is just a giant party, and no one here is ever bored. All the factories burn rainbows And you can buy a house on Mars There's so much that I could tell you But the coolest part by far Everybody gets a kitten A new one every single day Everybody gets a kitten That you can name if you want Everybody now! Everybody gets a kitten, yes they do, a new one every single day. Everybody gets a kitten, that you can name if you want. One more time! 